Well, I gave it a shot, but yeah, this is bad. This is really bad. So, um, in my Move the Needle video that I did on Wednesday, I alluded to a couple of comics that I had bought that I bought knowing that they were probably going to be bad, but that I wouldn't even mention them unless they were either really good and surprised me or were really bad. And this was one of the ones I was talking about. Um, I mean, this series is, is known as something of a joke. It's been relaunched, gosh, how many times since 2011 when they rebooted her as Captain Marvel? Uh, it's it's just known as being sort of just really frivolous, I guess. I mean, this is supposed to be their big character. This is what their next big movie franchise is going to be after Avengers. And her comic sucks. Um, it kind of, one thing that, uh, sucks for me is that Mim Headroom already did a video on this, which just flabbergasted me. I thought, nobody cares about this series, nobody's gonna do videos on it, uh, nobody, why would anybody, uh, pick this issue to do a, a video on? I thought I was gonna have the corner on it, and unfortunately he beat me to it, but I will not be deterred, I'm gonna do it. So, we get the recap. I guess this is the last part of this Dark Origins thing, which I don't know why it's called Dark Origins. I mean, nothing, the origin of anything really didn't get explained uh it's um her origin her little blurb here which all superheroes i think should have something like this even not very big superheroes i think that if you're starring in a major series you should always have something like this this paragraph at the top here so the little blurb at the top says no challenge is too great for former air force pilot turned superhero carol danvers she's come a long way since an incident with alien technology lift her with amazing powers Captain Marvel commanded the Alpha Flight space station miles above the planet where she and her crew defended the world from intergalactic threats until its recent destruction. Now, Captain Marvel continues to fight from Earth, always with an eye to the stars. So, I will give them credit for this. I don't know who wrote this. I don't know if it was Margaret Stoll. I don't know if it was the editors, Sana Aminat, Mark Basso, or Sarah Bernstein. I, I don't know who wrote this blurb, but uh, the part of her origin... She's come a long way since an incident with alien technology lift her with amazing powers is probably the most succinct that you're going to put it because Carol Danvers' origin is ridiculously complicated. <laughs> like when you read the Wikipedia page or the Marvel Wiki page, it goes into so much detail about so many little things. They never really had a clear view of what her origin was going to be for a long time. And it's changed several times like the... This version of Carol Danvers is basically a completely different character from even her, like, 2005 or 6 uh, ongoing series, which is written by Brian Reed. Uh, I mean, like, portraying her as this, like, militaristic superhero, she was never really portrayed like that. I mean, when, hypothetically, right, when she got out of the military in the 70s, uh, she was portrayed as more of a feminist character than a military character. When she got her... Uh, own series again in the early 2000s. She she was just portrayed as a superhero person. Um, she, you know, one of the premier uh, Avengers, but not any kind of militaristic superhero. But nowadays, they're going hardcore with the whole haircut thing. And this, uh, this costume actually isn't bad, but her body type is totally different from what it's been portrayed as. Um, not only that, this haircut, like, I was in the military... Uh, I can't speak for Air Force officers specifically, but at least in the Navy, this kind of haircut was not popular. Um, you know who tended to wear this kind of haircut? That's right, lesbians. Um, I mean, most women in the military are just women. Um, they, the uh, really, they just tended to have normal hair that they just tied up uh, because the standards for uh, women's haircuts were not quite as exactingly specific as male haircuts. There were just certain things you couldn't do. Uh, anyway, it, it just, it just annoys me when I see that, because you see this and you're like, oh, that's military. It's like, real women in the military tend to not have that kind of look. Um, so that's just annoying. So we get this, this is part five of, I guess, five, and we get this really complicated, uh, catch up, although admittedly, it does do a pretty good job of catching you up to speed. Basically, she's in an alternate universe, but not one that, uh is like is like famous it's not like the cancer verse it's not the negative zone it's just some weird alternate universe that we've never heard of before and uh 
basically all of her teammates are evil and Thanos is a good guy and whatever. And then we get this character whose name is Dr. Eve. And I was reading the comments on Mim's video. Apparently there is a, another uh, Kree geneticist female villain that Carol Danvers has that has been a persistent foe for her for years and years and years. And for some reason in this series... They didn't use that. They used this Dr. Eve character, which is that... I don't get the Eve thing. I mean, I thought that uh, Cree females, like Philovel, I thought they had three syllables in their name. And males had two. But I don't... <laughs> I, I don't know. I, whatever. Um, Mim Hedrum talked about this, and it's, it's the most glaringly obvious problem with this comic, is that the dialogue is awful it's so bad it's like this is supposed to be funny is this supposed to be even mildly amusing because i mean i was kind of laughing at it i wasn't laughing with it definitely uh it is really stupid but um i i mean there's so much this like entire pages of just really terrible thing here uh so this is evil carol dan well it's good Carol Danvers and evil Carol Danvers' clothing. And then we have evil Star-Lord. And then we have her nemesis, Dr. Eve, which is just such a, a dumb name. I, I, do I want to read it? I, do you want me to read it? I mean, I, the glare is going to be kind of rough. Okay, anyway, so <laughs> so the, the doctor lady says, surprise, surprise. And Carol is like, Dr. Eve? And she's like, Captain? And then evil Star-Lord is like, Dr. Dead Lady? And she's like, idiot. And then he says, Captain? Puh, idiot? Puh, that's Lord Idiot Starkill to you. This creeper's not a friend of yours, is she, Danvers? And then she says, Doc doesn't make friends, Quill. She grows them in her weird Cree clony bake ovens. I've seen it. Cool. Because I'm pretty sure I star killed her a few caves ago. Is that supposed to be days or caves? I don't know. Uh... I don't know. It's, it's typos, possibly, or just really weird dialogue on top of the stupid dialogue. Uh, Carol says, you what? <laughs> Star-Lord, or evil Star-Lord says, okay, to be fair, I didn't know you two had a thing going on. And Carol, with the, <laughs> the weirdest expression I've seen in a long time in a Marvel comic, says, a thing? Well, if you think running into your mad doctor nemesis after escaping your good guy Thanos nemesis is a thing. <sighs> Evil Star-Lord. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just hold on there. Just how many nemesis is... How many of us do you have? Uh, and then it just goes on. It's This is three pages into it. And we're still going on this stupid rant about... <laughs> With evil Star Lord and her, it just keeps going on and on, um, and then we get this panel here. So this is the evil Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm not even sure who this front person is supposed to be. Is it supposed to be evil Adam Warlock? I don't, I don't know. Or is it supposed to be evil Rocket Raccoon? Except she's a chick. I. Anyway, so we get evil Guardians and evil Alpha Flight. Um. Whatever. So they're uh. <laughs> So the, the Kree geneticist talks about her evil plan, and this actually this comic actually did answer a question I had. It wasn't a burning question, but it was something I was sort of interested in because in the Infinity Countdown Prime uh, one shot, which came out uh, last week, they mentioned that Captain Marvel had to go into a alternate dimension to find our the six one six is universe Reality Stone, and I had no clue what they were talking about, and I guess this. Cree doctor lady here stole it or something to do a thing with it and that's and Carol had to follow her to go find the reality stone so that's why in Infinity Countdown Captain Marvel has the stone which I still hate that they're called stones because they ought to be gems but whatever <laughs> anyway so she's explaining her evil plan to Carol because I mean of course she is and basically she's siphoning off the energy of this they keep calling her the Hollow Child, so I don't I don't know why they just don't call her a Kree because she's the Kree, this like ghost lady, Star Wars hologram person thing here. They keep calling her Bean, which is not exactly a Kree name, but then again, neither is Doctor Eve. 
I, I don't know. So anyway, so Carol hears her plan about how Dr. Eve is basically siphoning off this ghost's life force. And Carol is like, you can see her face here. She's pissed about it. She's like, oh man, now all of a sudden we went through this stupid uh, sitcom dialogue that went nowhere for freaking four pages. And now the plot's getting kicked. And Carol Danvers is now, she's pissed off. <clears throat> And when she hears her plan, this is her reaction. You're using the kid as a freaking horcrux? <laughs> and her eyes are like going Super Saiyan. And she's got this pissed off look in her eyes. And the, the only thing that she can do, the, the badass like line epiphany that she has is a Harry Potter reference. I Read another book, Carol. For fuck's sake. Um... And then I we go into her backstory. I don't care. I hope to never see this person again. Uh, whatever. Skipping pages. Skipping pages. The, like Mim said, once the plot actually gets going, it's not terrible. It's not great. And let's be honest about something, right? Like, superhero stories can be really, really, you know, amazing. They can be deep. They can be thought-provoking. But a lot of times, superhero stories are just mixing and matching different plot elements you know it's like what if we took an evil version of carol and risen put her in an evil universe and blah 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 it's like a lot of these superhero plots are just like you know they're erector sets you just snap them into place so on the one hand the plot isn't bad on the other hand do you get much credit for that in the superhero story that that is sort of inherently limited i'm not going to give you a lot of credit for that and i mean it's always about how it's done it's not about necessarily what happens and when you have dialogue like this uh the it's it's hard to give you points for being well done um so basically they're gonna move hala the kree homeworld into the regular universe uh because hala got eaten by galactus in uh the regular universe or did it get blown up in war of kings and eh, one of those two i don't remember it's not there anymore so the kree empire is completely scattered and uh, uh, basically, the being the who they keep calling the Hollow Child over and over again, even though it doesn't make any sense. She's like, oh, maybe displacing one entire planet into a completely separate universe uh, isn't such a good idea. So she doesn't go through with it, and then, uh, and then her her plan gets foiled. I don't know. Um, another weird thing is that. Like, this is kind of a, a dumb thing to focus on, but... So the idea is that uh, she... Carol and her evil counterpart in the evil universe switch places, and the evil version of Carol was named Corporal Danvers, or Corporal Marvel, something like that. It's like, why would any, like, supervillain threat call themselves a corporal? <laughs> I mean, corporal... You're an evil E4? I mean, that's, that's dumb. And not only that... If she's in the Air Force, why would she call herself a corporal? They, the Air Force are airmen. Airmen something. I don't remember exactly what. But they don't go by the Army or Marine rank structure. So this comic, it's so... It's like... And Margaret Stoll, the writer, she's going to be the writer on the like soft reboot that they're doing in a couple of months with Carol Danvers. In, like, in a couple of months, they're going to completely redo the origin or something. And she's going to be the writer on it. It's like, this comic doesn't sell well. Uh, and nobody talks about it. Like, you always hear, like, right now, well, the Winter Olympics just wrapped up. And the women's ski team had uh, Carol Dan, or the new Captain Marvel uh, costume, basically, as their ski suits. And like I said, as much as people rag on the costume, the costume actually isn't bad like i prefer the old warbird slash ms marvel one but if you had to redo it you could do a lot worse than this the problem is that like i said it's not just that they changed her costume they changed uh, her looks they changed her personality they changed her uh her origin they changed everything about her so that she's a completely different character now and since they did that it's like the the transformation from ms marvel to captain marvel that was a big deal Right, like that got, I think it was astroturfed, which is to say that it was pushed heavily by Disney Marvel, and that's why it sort of leaked, like, 
became into like the geek media websites like Screen Rant and and Geek Tyrant and other like sort of mainstream geek sites why they featured that costume so heavily I think it was because Disney sort of pushed it because they wanted to do the movie but uh but nevertheless the reaction was pretty big but since the, she did that there has not been a classic Carol Danvers story it's been what six seven years now um I mean how many classic Fantastic Four issues were in that there in that same time since their inception so it's like they just like the idea of a character that had previously been made towards what they call the male gaze who then became a character that wasn't as much about that uh even though by feminist theory this actually still is uh part of the male gaze but whatever <laughs> so it's like if you were going to do the reboot of Captain Marvel that they're going to do, and I can't remember when it comes out exactly. It's a few months from now, at least. Why Why would you pick Margaret Soul to do it? I mean, this series sucks. <laughs> it's like, I remember Mim Headroom and Diversity in Comics talking about it. and it was, I mean, just look at her face there. <laughs> look at it. This is what this series is. It's this. It's not, like, the occasional moments of, of competency, like these these back panels here where the plot actually picks up it's like okay this isn't bad but that's not what characterizes this series it's stupid stuff like this oh my gosh this panel is this entire series in a nutshell but um i is this the last issue of this particular series i don't know because it doesn't say that uh like on the one hand there's no letter core or a column talking about how inspired everyone was to work on this series. But there's no advertising for the next issue either. I, it's just... Ooh, it's so baffling. This is supposed to be their premier female hero? I... I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Um, okay, I, I'm... Uh, I think I'm done with this. Uh, there are actual good books that came out this week. Uh, the thing is, I'm actually was forced to move uh, earlier than expected. Like, you can see that this isn't the desk that I normally do things on, and I'm probably never going to be back there again. And I don't know when I'm going to be in, like, any kind of, like, stable sort of uh, rhythm. So I don't know how often I'll be doing videos. So I just wanted to do this one while I could. Uh, so anyway, tell me what you think. Tell me if there is, like... A halfway decent story from Carol Danvers slash Captain Marvel from the past six years. Because I'm, I'm kind of curious. Not necessarily super curious, but kind of curious. Um, but uh, like, comment, subscribe. In any case, this is Unring Chevron signing off.